Hello everybody, I'm Ryan Kim, America's best friend. Here's the deal, I'm spending some time in Rutland, Vermont. If you've ever heard of Rutland, you've definitely heard bad things about it and you've probably heard its nickname, Rut Vegas, which is tied to its reputation as a gritty, grimy, dirty city because this community has had a lot of issues in the past with drugs, poverty, and crime. Here's the deal, I think that what's happened to Rutland is what's happening to America. There are so many good things going on in this community, but the media has decided to selectively choose just a few bad things which are real problems but very limited and define the entire community by that. And I think that is just wrong. Look, Rutland really has gone through some difficult times, especially at the end of the 1900s, but in recent years, this community has been coming together, they've been doing amazing things here, and the whole community is just on the up and up. It's just a community on the rise. Folks, I'd like to welcome you all to the Rutland Revival. Today, we're just gonna do some quick history of the Rutland area. Come on, let's go. In the Rutland area, the first people to move in were Yankees. They came in to farm and to raise Merino sheep. The next group to show up in the area was the Irish. They showed up first in the early 1800s and then showed up in a big wave around the Irish potato family. Then, as the local marble industry started to just boom, the Italians started showing up in force because they were really skilled marble workers. Then there was a huge wave of Poles, people from Poland. And then after that, of course, there were just a whole mix of other people that just showed up in town and <laughs> mixed together right here in Rutland. <laughs> and the result was some incredibly surprising, wonderful mixture, something you would never expect, which turns out to be really, really great. And that's basically the story of immigration in Rutland. <laughs> this intersection today, West Street and Main Street is pretty much a boring intersection, but this is where Rutland originally started. When the Yankees first settled this area, they built all their houses on this flat land, and they used hollowed out logs to pipe water down from the hills of Menden behind me to this location here. In 1850 though, the train showed up, but it showed up down the hill from here, and all these businesses wanted to be closer to the transportation, so they started moving down toward the train tracks. Then, in 1857, there was a massive fire that just gutted the area, so all the settlers were like, all right, let's just move closer to the train tracks next to the businesses. So that's why today, downtown is down the hill from here, near the train tracks, and today, the intersection just is what it is. One last thing before we move on, all right? You ever hear of John Deere, you know, tractor company? Yellow, green, deer, you know, ring a bell? The guy, John Deere, the man himself, was born in a house across the street from here. He grew up in Rutland, and then he moved to the Midwest where he invented the plow that broke the plains and led to a massive agricultural revolution. Revolution! So, for anybody sitting on their couch at home, eating cord plates and just passively talking smack about Rutland, I think it's time you got up off that couch, brushed your teeth, and came down to Rutland and saw it for yourself. All right, thank you very much, John Deere. Cheers, let's keep going. <laughs> this is the Vermont Marble Museum, which is in Proctor, adjacent to the city of Rutland. Ever since like the 1800s, Vermonters have been finding marble in the ground and quarrying it out. The thing is though, is that marble is extremely heavy and it's really hard to get anywhere. But in the 1850s, the train showed up in town and all of a sudden, getting the marble out of town was extremely easy. So the Vermont Marble Company formed and it turned into the largest marble company in the entire world. In fact, in the early 1900s, the Vermont Marble Company was the largest American corporation, period. They were hiring thousands of people. They were importing immigrant workers from 23 different countries around the world. Today, if you go to Washington DC, if you go to state capitals all around the country, Vermont marble is just everywhere. All right, come on, let's go. In 1903, the city of Rutland passed an ordinance. They said no more firearms in public. The citizens fought back, and the case went all the way to the state Supreme Court, which ended up ruling in favor of citizens' right to bear arms. So today, there's something called Vermont carry, which basically allows people to conceal carry firearms in public without a permit. Like I said, that was all history. I am so excited to tell you a little bit about what's going on in Rutland today and to tell you about what Rutland tomorrow hopefully looks like. So stick with me. I'm so excited to show you around. I'll catch you next time in Rutland, Vermont. Come on! Woohoo! <laughs> catch you next time in Rutland, Vermont. Let's go! <laughs> Woo! <laughs> okay, wow.